The Galaxy Watch Active and Watch Active 2 were both released by Samsung in 2019, except one of them is $200 and the other is almost $300. But what is the difference? And which one is the right watch for you? In this video, I will explore the differences between these two watches and test out the claims made by Samsung to determine whether or not they justify the upgrade. In this video, the black watch is the Galaxy Watch Active 2 and the silver one is the Galaxy Watch Active. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michael Bryan, and like I said, this video is all about the Galaxy Watch Active 1 and Galaxy Watch Active 2, comparing them head to head. So I've been wearing them side by side for a few days, and the first thing I wanna do right now is actually show you guys some of the fundamental hardware differences between the two. So even though they both look very, very similar, there are some subtle differences that can make a difference for you. So the first major difference you might notice putting these watches side by side would be the larger screen and smaller bezel on the Watch Active 2. So the Watch Active 2 has a 1.2 inch screen, where the Watch Active 1 only has a 1.1 inch screen. That doesn't seem like a huge difference, but when you look at them, you do notice it. And if you work out the area calculations, the screen works out to be about 15 to 20% larger on the Watch Active 2. So that is a significant difference when you're looking at it. I think it's a good upgrade. But other than that, you'll see that most of the general geometry of these two watches is almost the same. Now looking at the side, one thing that is a very subtle change is you'll see on the Watch Active 1, they have two buttons right there where one button's kind of smaller and one's awkwardly larger. One of them kind of has like a, a matte circle in the middle, the other one has a matte ring. So a little bit of an awkward aesthetic right there being that they're two circles and one is larger. Now on the Watch Active 2, I think they really kind of fixed that and ironed that out by having one smaller button with with no mat anywhere on there. And then the other button is a long oval. I just think it's a slightly better aesthetic. They also moved, you'll see on the top of the Watch Active 1, they have a barometer and a microphone, so two holes in the top. They moved one of those two holes over to the side now. I'm not really sure what the functional difference of that is, but regardless, they did that. Maybe it's for space on the inside. Then you'll see on the left side, the Watch Active 2 has a speaker. The Watch Active 1 does not. Now, this is a big fundamental difference that really enables you to do a lot more with the Watch Active 2. So I'll get into more of the functional differences later, but you can just imagine you're able to you know, take phone calls on this. You're able to play back voice recordings. You're able to have Bixby talk back to you. There really are quite a few options when you have a speaker built into your watch. Next, if we flip these watches over on the back, you'll see that the watch bands are approximately the same. They're gonna be the same dimensions. They look and feel basically the same. You'll notice that the back of the watch, however, looks a little bit different. And so this is a big hardware difference here where the Watch Active 2 does have ECG capabilities and it has more heart rate sensors built in. So instead of having four heart rate diodes, this one has eight. So it should be significantly more accurate. We will test that out later on to see if that claim is true. A subtle difference that you probably don't even care about is the accelerometer difference. So the accelerometer on the Watch Active 1 goes up to 16 Gs, and on the 2 it goes up to 32 Gs. Just one of the many sensors that Samsung claimed to upgrade on the Watch Active 2 to make it better at being an active watch. So better at tracking your exercise, better at tracking your health and your movement. So we're, again, we're gonna test that out later on in the video. Another hardware difference inside of these watches, and this is one that maybe you'll notice, maybe you won't, but the Watch Active 1 has Bluetooth 4.2, and the 2, of course, has Bluetooth 5.0. Being only slightly newer, six months, I don't know why they didn't integrate that into the original one, but they have it in the new one, so Bluetooth should be better on the new watch. So a quick little aside, if you're new here and have not yet subscribed, but you are interested in either one of these watches, I did make an individual review of both of them. So once you're done with this video, go down and click subscribe and click the bell icon, then head over to my channel, or actually I'll link it down in the description. Check out the full video of whichever watch you like best. Now, if neither of these are the watch for you, so if $200 is still too expensive for you, I actually also reviewed the Galaxy Fit, which is a smaller, cheaper fitness tracker that really just goes with the bare bone basics of what these are able to do. So you can track your sleep, you can track your heart rate, you can track your exercises, but it's not gonna be a big aesthetic smartwatch. It'll be a smaller band for about $100. Made a video about that, check that out if you're interested. Then I would say the last big difference in the hardware between the two of these, and I think this is probably the most exciting one, besides the speaker, is having a touch bezel. So having a touch bezel on the two really, really makes this much more user-friendly compared to the one. So even though it is a very responsive touch screen, the operating system is still designed based on the older Samsung watches, which have a big mechanical rotating bezel. So not being able to use a rotating bezel to navigate through, everything's located, you know, in a very circular fashion. It's very kind of, 
it's, it's awkward to have to tap around that, and it doesn't, it's not what it should be. So they fixed that, Samsung listened to the complaints, they upgraded this on the Watch Active 2, you have a touch bezel. So I think this is even better than a mechanical bezel, honestly, because you don't have to worry about moving parts, nothing that can, you know, it's much less that can break, it's more waterproof, and it's also smaller and more aesthetic, I think. So having the no mechanical bezel, but still having a touch bezel, just sort of fixes a lot of problems from both watches. So these watches do share quite a few specs, and I think battery life is one of them, despite having different battery sizes. So the Watch Active 1 has a 230 milliamp hour battery, and then the 2 has a 247. That extra 17 milliamp hours, I don't really see a, a functional difference in the length of the battery of this watch, mainly because it has a bigger screen, has more sensors, more going on there, so it does use a little bit more power. Ultimately, they both come out to be approximately a two-day battery. There are some different settings you can optimize. You can really crank this watch and make it die within one day, or you can go all the way as far as time-only mode and make it last something like five days. So of course, most people will never use time-only mode. It's kind of stupid to get a, a smartwatch and use time-only mode, but I do use it if my watch gets down to like 15%, rather than having like an hour of watch and then just a piece of hardware in your wrist that does nothing, I would rather finish out my day with at least the time on my wrist. That's just what I do. I don't know. Now some non-hardware differences, but definitely some big fundamental differences between the two of these. The Watch Active 2 has significantly more options. So if you go online and I'll show you a screenshot right there, you can actually do a lot with customizing this watch. So you can choose if you want a 40 millimeter, a 44 millimeter watch, so significantly larger there. And the 44 millimeter, by the way, would be a 1.4 inch screen, so even bigger yet. And then you also have options of having LTE on board. You have some aluminum versus st stainless steel options. You have quite a few options in different colors when looking for the right watch for you. So the Active 2 does have more options than the Active 1, although both of them do have some pretty nice colors. Both of them do look really good, and like I said, both of them are generally very similar. So getting into the interface of these phones, you'll notice that there are almost no differences. They're both running the same operating system. They both have you know, generally the same speed, the same hardware. A lot of it's very, very similar. You'll notice maybe one small difference if you swipe down from the top. Uh, by default, the quick settings are larger on the Watch Active 2 than they are on the 1. So if you're somebody that, you know, you want the larger screen and you want to be able to see things a little better, maybe you don't have the best vision at looking at small things, maybe the Watch Active 2 is just an easier start for you being a bigger screen, or even the 44 millimeter, which is a bigger screen yet. So just a very small difference there. So the watch faces, I'll jump over to the app right now, the Galaxy Wearable app, and I'll show you the different watch faces that you have for the Watch Active 2. But some of the fundamental differences, of course, because you have a speaker on this, you can have ticking on your watch faces, which is kind of interesting, can be annoying for some people. You can turn it on or off though for most faces. And essentially what that does is if you have an analog watch face and anytime you turn your watch face on, so you lift up your watch to look at it or you press the button to wake your watch, it'll start making a ticking sound just so it feels a little bit more natural like an analog watch. So you can see here that the Watch Active 1 interface on Galaxy Wear is actually a lot harder to find a good watch face. There are too many third-party ones and there are not enough Samsung ones that work well and are free. Possibly my favorite watch face for the Watch Active 2 is the one that can be customized based on what you're wearing. So you can take a picture of whatever clothing you have. Here I'm just taking a picture of the woods just to show you generally how it works. Then you select an area of where you want to take the colors from. Then it extracts those colors and finds a watch face that will match what you're wearing for that day. So I think it'd be foolish for me not to mention the price differences between these two watches. So the Watch Active 1 is $200, the Watch Active 2 starts at $280, and if you get the 44 millimeter watch or if you get the LCE version, you know, the price goes up substantially from there. Okay, so that's really the only differences I see between these watches, but of course Samsung did claim that the Watch Active 2 has better sensors, so I'm gonna take these for a test drive, wear them side by side on my wrist, and show you guys the results when you're comparing the heart rate, the pedometer, the sleep tracking, and a few other sensors from there. So looking at the heart rate sensors on both of these, you'll notice that the Watch Active 1 can read your heart rate significantly faster. I believe it's because it has fewer sensors, so there's less to process, of course. But ultimately, they both come out to approximately the same heart rate, plus or minus maybe one or two beats. I've measured this many times. Here they happen to come out with the same number. So next, I went to bed with both of these watches on, one on either wrist. So admittedly, that does make a difference that they're on different wrists. There's going to be different movements, and so they might not track perfectly, but you will see they're approximately 
slightly the same. They're within 11 minutes of total sleep time of each other. Kind of strange that that was different. But as we look down, most of the numbers are approximately the same. The sleep efficiency is 93 versus 91. You go down and it's approximately the same with everything. It's not perfect. These sleep trackers are never perfect because they really do base a lot on your movement. And for that reason, I wouldn't say, you know, this obviously cannot replace medical equipment, but it should give you a general idea of how well you slept. Okay, so next we're gonna test out the GPS on both of these. I will have my phone on airplane mode, wearing them both on the same wrist, walking about half a mile, so not that far. But there was a recent update on the Galaxy Watch Active 2. When it was released, the GPS was really bad. There were some bugs there. They should, they should have fixed them now. So we're gonna find out if that's true. So I'll be walking on the road in the dark with two watches on. If somebody stops me, that's gonna be really awkward to explain. Just please, <laughs> please click the like button. <laughs> Okay, so it's hard to read right there, but this one registered 0.26, this registered 0.27. So the GPS seems to be fairly accurate on both of these. I think tomorrow, unfortunately after I export this video, I'll go for a longer run, so check the comments down below. I'll leave a pinned comment about what it's like with a five mile run. All right, so now for a pedometer test, you'll see right here on the Watch Active 1, we have 84.98. On the Watch Active 2, we have 8,067. Okay, so 500 steps later, you'll see that on the Watch Active 2, we have 85.69, and on the Watch Active 1, we have 89.96. Okay guys, so overall, these are both great watches, but which one is actually the best watch for you? I think it really comes down to what you're willing to spend. I think it's obvious that the Watch Active 2 is a better watch because it does everything the Watch Active 1 does, and then some more. There are also more options with the 2, so if you want a bigger watch, if you want LTE, the 2 is really your only option. And the fundamental differences that I think are really important, I think the touch bezel is one of them where it's easier to navigate, although that's not critical. I used the Watch Active 1 for a while and never had any problems with it. You get used to swiping back and forth. The smaller screen, again, is not really a big deal. And then really the only big difference that I would say is maybe worth the upgrade for some people would be having a speaker on board so you can make phone calls, you can use Bixby, uh, you can play back voice memos and things like that. So that's really the only major upgrade for me that I think would maybe be worth paying the extra money. So it comes down to, are you willing to pay $80 for a better watch that generally does the same thing, but you know is a little bit better in some other ways, enables you to do more, has the most efficiency, uh, in your daily life, or do you want to save that $80 and go with the Watch Active 1? Nobody's going to know the difference from looking at your watch except for you, and really, you can get by doing almost all the same stuff. So it's up to you guys. Which one do you actually like better? Comment down below. I think most people will probably like the Watch Active 2 better, although it is more expensive. Ultimately, it is a very, very impressive watch. So like I said, comment down below which one you like better. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.